Yo, Legion Games here. This is potentially the last video before the final new setup, if I can get it figured out this weekend. I'm a little trepidatious about getting everything set up for you guys, but hopefully the next couple videos uh, that get done new will have an additional flair, additional touch. We'll see where it goes from there. But uh, as always from this past week, I have a few videos that have been already you know, recorded, and so there will be a few of those coming out too, so don't be surprised if you see a little bit of the old stuff too, this and a little bit of the other. Anyway, that's not why you tuned in. You want to know about the upcoming Kickstarter GameFound games that are launching this coming week, as well as a little bit of everything else alongside of that. So let's get right to it. There are not very many this upcoming week after this past week, which if you did not watch my past video from this week, I highly recommend you check out my overview from this past week. I know it's a long one, but I guarantee you it is one of the most solid from beginning to end videos I have ever done. And it is just packed full of everything you need to know about all the games that launched this week. I guarantee you, you will not find a better synopsis and more thoughts on them that are more relevant anywhere else on the internet. Guaranteed, it is that good. I am that proud of that video from yesterday. So please, if you have not checked that one out, give it a look-see. There are a couple games like Skyrise and Pagan, Fate of Roanoke, that are flying under the radar that I think need a lot more attention. And there you go. As always, thumb it, subscribe it, smash the like button, and I have a Patreon if you really like what you see because the new setup was not cheap, let me tell you. Anyway, besides that, let's get right into it. What else do you need to know? What's coming out next week? Let's go. So this is first and foremost, this is the big one launching sort of an in-between week here towards the end of June. On the 21st, we have Simon's next campaign. This is going to be Cyberpunk 2077, a tabletop version of the video game that came out. And just like the video game, this is bound to be divisive in terms of what people feel. Now, it's going to be miniature driven. And that's going to be the big aspect of things that's going to sort of be a little bit different because we've seen other variations of the area control style from Simon. I mean, the Eric Lang trilogy of Blood Rage, Rising Sun, and Ankh. But how is this going to adapt, as it says here, the world of cyberpunk? It's taking this underground night city. You are controlling a gang, moving your units around on this area control style board but there are going to be interactions there's going to be quests there's going to be corporations there's going to be subtypes of types of players or units essentially that you're going to be having to manage they talk about a little bit of the design elements and only having six major areas and how you utilize that in an area control game when most of us are used to having you know upwards of 8 to 10 to 12 different areas that you're vying for dominance in. There are three designer diaries out here right now from the Simon webpage. Quackalope just released his gameplay video on the night of me filming this. So if you want to see a little bit more of what it actually is going to entail, you can check that out. Now, just based on reading the designer diaries here with a little bit of information that they provide here, I don't really know how fluid the gameplay is going to be. The second design diary uh, really just talks about the fairness in the sense that there are going to be no ties. The corporations that you are going to be going up against, and it seems like to me, just based on the description and the nuances that they're describing as they talk about it in the designer diaries here, is it's a player versus player competitive, but it's also a player versus game. Because you're going to be going up against, as it says here, corporations. But they make it very clear you are not going to be open world sandbox at the same time and that's more of the third designer diary we'll talk about in a second but multiple gangs there are no tiebreakers no tiebreakers someone's gonna win someone's going to lose period you're going to have to potentially deal with worst case scenarios best case scenarios corporate retaliation and you know bigger reward bigger risk so no ties, like I said here, in the gang wars even. No ties with the corporations. How do you represent this sort of video game on a tabletop? I have no idea. But they're trying. Like it says here, like I just mentioned, this is not a sandbox game. They're not trying to duplicate that, but they're trying to come up with ways to make it feel invested in terms of what you're doing. Quests and missions, uh, not for players though, for managing gangs that doesn't make as much sense so what they're doing is they're having these sets as they stay here of plug and play a deck of act cards and special components that goes along with it the plot points 
and the intro cards, setting up the acts subsequently that can happen throughout the game, and how they affect the storyline based on what you do, how you interact. So how do you feel about that? Unique epilogue rules, conditions that end the game, rewards based on requirements that are satisfied. I don't know. I don't know. This seems incredibly ambitious. I could see it go either way. I really feel like this would be a great game for $50 at retail right now. But I worry you're going to have 67 different alternate sculpts for units that would be easily represented a la, I know, all miniature games with cubes or anything else. I would love to see them go more Blood Rage or more even Dogs of War if you are old enough to remember that game towards the very beginning of their Kickstarter crowdfunding run where it was really scaled back and the design was so preeminent and so predominant that it showed from the get-go. But I have a bad feeling that this is going to be massive priced, not anywhere near zombie side Marvel or <laughs> Marvel zombies, if you will, but something along those lines. We'll see. I'm also hoping that we have a rule book because I think this is one that is really, really going to need some rules to really define what's going on, how much nuance there is, especially with these acts, with these interacting story plot points. And I don't feel like one gameplay video is going to give you necessarily the nuance of the difference between some of those that you may want to see otherwise. So we'll see when it launches on the 21st. This is Stardust Coffee. Yeah, yeah I said Stardust Coffee because it is 300 years in the future. Uh, the Ottoman Empire, which brought over coffee and made it more mainstream in terms of people being addicted to it. Uh, let's be honest here. And you are now spacefaring junkies going across looking for this magical stardust that is actually organic material that makes any flavor, any drink of coffee that much better, that much more magical essence-like. So obviously you have to get it, find it, bring it to the people that are going to buy it and rinse and repeat, right? Pick up and deliver. Now this game wouldn't be complete if you didn't along the way run into some bumpy trouble and that's because not only are you going to have to pick up the ingredients to make the coffee and the stardust to get extra victory points, you're also going to have to fend off potentially space pirates who are going to try and steal your space booty. I'm not rephrasing that for the sake of this video. And that's what you're going to be doing when this two to four player game launches on the 21st. Here you can see various recipes that are going to get you various victory points in terms of what you're going to be doing and making for the actual coffee itself. There is a little bit of dice rolling involved in this as well, but unfortunately there's only one five minute Kickstarter preview out there right now. No rules or anything else to tell you more of what the nuances and the mechanisms are, but you'll have to just check it out when it launches on the 21st. Also launching on the 21st, we have a game called Drop Bears, the survival series, but this is chapter one, Australian Outback version. Essentially, you are in the Outback trying to survive. The, the name of the game comes from the actual uh, creature on the cover of the game box, and that is called a Drop Bear, a combination of bear koala that has a craving for human flesh that's trying to devour you and prevent you from surviving in the Outback wild in the first place. Cooperative dice rolling hand management style game for one to four players. Uh, you're going to be resting, exploring, gathering resources, trying to do everything you can to stay alive until the end. You're just trying to survive until dawn, but apparently in this game, you will be eaten at some point because when you get eaten, it says in the description, you will have to choose a new survivor, a new camper uh, to take over. But if the drop bears get too many, then they win. A very interesting aesthetic there appears. There's also going to be miniatures with this game. Some sort of iconography, as you can see, present on the hexagonal board pieces that you're going to be moving to and from. So we'll kind of see what it actually looks like, what it actually entails, and what other nuances there are in this game to set it apart from other games that are, I don't want to say roll and move, but that's giving me the general gist. What are the nuances that are going to make me attracted to it and want to be more interested in it in the first place? There's one video over here on Board Game Geek with an unboxing, but otherwise we're going to have to wait and see on the 21st until we get more information. Also launching on the 20th, we have a game over on GameFound here called Immunization. How diseases are fought off through the creation of vaccines. You are part of the pharmaceutical team that is developing the next generation in vaccines against those life-threatening outbreaks. You can see just a basic scaffolding of what this game is going to be about and what it's going to look like, but unfortunately you don't really see any of the mechanisms here in terms of what you're going to be doing, how you're going to be creating the formulas that are going to lead to the technologies, that are going to lead to the vaccines and the clinical trials and the studies, and then managing the production and launching it to actually fight the diseases themselves. Competitive, cooperative, as well as solo, all included, which... 
is a little bit interesting. I'm not sure how you're going to quite do that, but it's going to be interesting to see from an educational game standpoint, as they say, they're also marketing it from that aspect, trying to stay a little bit true to the actual production process. You can see the gameplay all in reward here for just over $43. That's about it. It's launching on the 20th, and we're going to see what else happens with it and how well it does when it launches on GameFound. Last up, also launching on the 23rd, is not just boss battles. This is about two years old. It's an expansion, Slime and Souls, as well as Ashen Bone Edition. So what does that actually mean? What do you need to know about this game? This is a head-to-head -head or cooperative dueling game where you are controlling one of four possible heroes and going up against one of three possible bosses, potentially. There is sort of a pseudo-timer mechanic in terms of playing versus waiting that you're going to be having to manage as you go about these fights. If we hop over to the Kickstarter previous page when it funded, it raised $32,000 a couple years ago, and the main action mechanism system that you're going to be using is an action queue to synchronize the abilities that you're going to be doing, controlling when they activate, and then, you know, triggering them when you need them to actually go off. Your basic classes of what you might be thinking of when you think of typical fantasy tropes, and the skill level up in the deck building that you're going to be doing with a little bit of the 3D element, uh, your classical bosses that you're going head to head here, and then the various modes that I mentioned before. Now, several of the criticisms are the rule book needs some fine tuning, there's a lot of overhead that you're trying to manage, and just kind of going back and forth in terms of, you know, the mitigation and what you're trying to remember on a turn by turn basis. What sets it apart though? What makes it different in terms of these mechanisms? You can check out a little bit of the overview here. You can see what else is on based on the previous page. I'll put that link down in the video description below, but it was not also inexpensive last time with $50 for that and then 74 for the deluxe version with extra gameplay content. So it's coming with two new expansions here. You can even go over to their website here and check it out to see what it more looks like with a closer up view of some of the cards and some of the FAQ. So if you're really interested, it's gonna be launching on the 23rd. I don't mind the aesthetic, but show me why you are better than other one versus one or cooperative skirmish games out there. I need to see more information. I wanna see more information and we'll see when it launches, what it looks like. So now let's go over to the over under section of this video. What did I choose? How wrong was I this week? I said over under 500k for Septima. Well, it's at 300k. It's got over another 24 hours to go. So I don't think it's going to make another 200,000, but we'll see how close it is when this actually airs to determine whether or not I was right. Arcs ended. I backed it. It was over or under 1.4 million. It just broke 1.4 million, so I was right on that one. So potentially one for two. I also said Castles of Burgundy was going to be over 2.6 million euros, and it crushed it at almost 3 million euros. So two for three. Amygdala, I said 50,000. I thought it was going to be over. Uh, you know, it's under. It's not going to break 50K by the time. And I said 50,000 euros, not 50,000 US. So I'm going to be wrong on that one. That's going to be two for four. And Bark Avenue, again, I went two for five because I said Bark Avenue, the over under was 70,000, which was pretty close. But I said under instead of over, and it was at 74,000. So that's last week's. What do we got rising up this week? First up, uh, you know, Aeon's End is going to be ending. Aeon's End just started, but it's going to be ending before this video airs next week. So over or under $350,000. I'm going to go under just because I think there's not as many hardcore Aeon's Enders like me going in with this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was over as well. You know what? Let's just go back to Septima. You know, let's say Septima, let's say $600,000. Again, I'm going to go under because I think it's going to start to taper off when people actually read the rule book, like I talked about in the video yesterday. It's still dense. It's still complex. It's just shorter. So it's going to be interesting to see where it goes, though, and how steady it keeps rising. But I'm going to say it's going to taper off by next week. Skyrise, one of my sleepers of the week from yesterday. I'm going to say over or under $300,000. And I'm going to say under because I think it's tapering off too, but this is really off to a hot start. So I'm interested to see where it's going to go from here. And let's say over or under does Bot Factory fund. Does Bot Factory fund in the next week? I don't think it's going to fund yet by next week. Will it fund? Yeah. Will it be by next Saturday? Eh but it'll be an interesting prospect to see nonetheless. Short, sweet, and to the point, because I know you guys love this segment so much. <laughs>
So TV time, where are things at? Uh, I finished The Watcher, uh, the K-drama. It was an excellent series, 16 episodes. The ending was still good. It was still very solid. I was happy all the way throughout. It's probably one of the best things I've seen so far in 2022. No, I haven't started watching Obi-Wan. No, I haven't even watched Boba Fett. No, I haven't even finished The Mandalorian. So I'm way behind on my Star Wars. I'll get there eventually. It's just, you know, interest is just sort of tapered off over the last couple of years. So it'll happen. Uh, I've they've got another new K drama called The Insider, which is really looking good so far. Just two episodes in, and then there's an AMC show called Dark Winds, a setback. I think in like the 70s or 80s uh, about a murder on an Indian reservation and the tribal cops and the interactions between the FBI and them and the mistrust and sort of the uh, investigation that goes along with it. So so far that one seems solid as well. Other than that, I don't have a lot. Uh, I'm working all weekend, so there's that. Uh, in two weeks from now, two weeks from now, I will have this video pre-recorded because I'm going to be going on vacation. So that week of, uh, the, starting with July 4, there's not probably going to be as much that week in terms of videos because, uh, the place we're going on vacation doesn't really have any really good Wi-Fi signal. The Wi-Fi signal of the Airbnb we're going to is this place we've gone in the past and it's crappy at best, like five people can be connected. And even then it's like super crawling slow at times. So there's no chance of me being able to upload anything from there. So anything that week that's going to be launched that week is going to be pre-recorded. So hopefully I can get a couple things done before then, but I'm working every day since this past Monday between now and July 4, except for like four days. So my schedule is crazy busy between that aspect of things too. And I've got to get the whole shebang set up this weekend because I am terrified that I am not going to like I have bought parts, I've returned parts already like three or four, and I just, I'm terrified that I'm still not going to have it all set up by the time the weekend is done after doing this. I'm staring at the C-stand above the uh, laptop right now, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'm hopefully going to have it all set up so I can do the dual uh, camera shot thing and kind of do that, and just, I need to learn like Da Vinci, uh, whatever it is, DaVinci, whatever. It's the, the upgraded uh, video editing software. So, I mean, I have a lot on my plate going in forward and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get DaVinci going because I wanna give it that added quality to like, you know, bullet points popping down here and graphics doing this and, you know, stuff like that. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So it's gonna be crazy. You know, maybe I'll do stop motion. I don't have a clue. What What's interesting? What's gonna appeal? I don't know. I'm good at talking. I'm good at rambling. You guys know that by now at this point. Anyway, you made it this far. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I got nothing else going on. I got other stuff I just need to get played this weekend too. Uh, this thing right here. This needs to get more play because I'll tell you right now, I'm pretty impressed with this so far, but I wanna get my, a couple more plays in before I give my final impression on it so uh that's going on yeah and that's all i got so far long enough video short enough video whatever you want to say but i'll take it either way so light week but this past week definitely check out my video from yesterday if you did not most appreciated tuning in in the first place thank you stay classy see you around Anyway, that's not why you tuned in. You tuned in because you want to know about the upcoming KickFunder